All right, I have finally completed the lead pan video and I'm excited to share it with you broskis and broskettes. We're about to craft a lead pan to waterproof this shower. It might sound like it's an ancient technique to some, but in New York City these are very common, especially in Manhattan. I think we can all agree that this is the best and the longest lasting technique though. For this particular shower, we start off with a 6 feet by 4 feet lead sheet which weighs about 200 pounds and cost them measly $500. First, I start off by measuring the shower. Then look for an area big enough to open up the lead sheet. I put some masonite on the floor to protect it from scratches and unroll the lead sheet open like the red carpet. Then I mark 6 inches all around which will be extended above the shower floor. After, I mark the shower length and width into the sheet to draw that perfect rectangle which will help with shaping it. In order for the pan to come out the exact measurements of the shower, I marked it a quarter of an inch smaller in all four sides because you have to take into consideration the thickness of the sheet itself. Then I cut out the excess piece of the lead that was unnecessary and rolled it up like a burrito to take it to the scrapyard for peanuts. But hey, fuck it, peanuts is better than no nuts, right? Next, I bend the lead sheet at the mark to create a crease that will make it easier to bend the corners. The bending process of the corners is where the expertise is most needed. In order to get that perfect corner, I have to mark the diagonal as a guideline and bend it slowly while raising the sides. Once I have a good looking corner, I take two pieces of 2x4s and straighten out the sides by using a hammer. When the overall shape looks like the perfect rectangle, I start bending the corners into place because they have to be aligned a certain way in order for the pan to fit into place perfectly. The corner next to the step has to be bent into the side away from the shower step in order to make the contractor's life easier when they install the tiles in the marble saddle. The opposite corner should be bent perpendicular to the step corners to ensure the length and the width of the pan come out precisely like the shower space. By the way, just recently I found out that the bent corners are actually called pig ears and that sounds fucking epic bro so I will never call them anything else for the rest of my life. After the pig ears are bent in place I slap the sides with two 2x4s two to flatten them out. Then I measure the outside of the pan to make sure that it's the right size and that we didn't fuck up during the process. And it was perfect so the pan is all done and now comes the fun part broski. I have to prepare the shower for the installation. So I removed the shower strainer and marked out all four screws in the inside of the shower drain. Then cleaned out the area well. I have to make sure there are no raised spots or sharp shit that could puncture the lead cause that would completely beat the purpose of doing all this shit. So now it's time to put it in place broskis and broskets. Thankfully the bathroom was closed because this big boy was definitely heavy. Also, it's hard to grab it because it can bend and get damaged, but I obviously have a good technique for that too. The way I grab it is by putting the pan on its long side and grip it with both hands as if you're praying with it. This is obviously a two-man job, so my guy grabbed the other hand. We place the pan inside the shower and with a couple of wiggles, the lead pan fit perfectly into place like a condom. Wait, hold up, silly me. I meant to say it fits like a glove bro, but you get the point, right? Anyways, to find the drain hole, I apply pressure with my hand to locate it. After with the hammer, I hit it multiple times until the hole opens up. By doing so, I'm also shaping the lead into the side of the drain to ensure a better coverage. After banging the sides into the drain, I cut out the small piece and drill out the holes for the screws with the tip of a Phillips head. The reason I use that is because I want to keep the holes minimally open so we don't create leaks. While I'm doing that, my guy is mis mixing some fresh epoxy to close all the holes where the water could leak out of. Usually, I use a different kind of epoxy but the supply was out that day. The reason I like the other one better is because it dries faster. This JB Weld shit takes 24 hours to cure, bro. I'm sure it does its job, but who has 24 hours in New York City to wait, bro? Come on. So I screw in the flange and apply the epoxy in the screws and where the lead kisses the drain. The masterpiece is complete. Now, I know 
that I will get some comments on why I used lead. So I want to explain that a bit. Let's start off by acknowledging that lead is toxic and there's no doubt about that. But the New York City plumbing code allows it in showers and even toilets. Are other te techniques allowed? Of course. Of course they are, but most architects and engineers still prefer the lead pen and specify it in their plans. Also, the buildings prefer this method over others because this has proven to be the most effective. And also, bro, no one is eating this shit, so it can't possibly hurt you. So chill out and enjoy the video.